All right, so the car is down now. So check out how nice this engine bay is. We didn't really do much to the bay. We we're putting in the new fuel lines like we had described. Dual feed, single return back to the Turbo Smart FPR 1200. We like that one. It's our favorite one. If you want that, it's on our website. Check it out. But look, he's got a Hypertune and a Borg Warner EFR. This is a 9180, so this is capable of just about a thousand horsepower if everything goes right, depending on back pressure and everything. But he never was able to accomplish that. I think he might have made 840, he said, but now he wanted to redo the fueling so because he was running out of fuel and then go back to the dyno then he can do a pump gas tune again and race gas tune or e85 tune again try and make more power on the e85 tune than he did before because he'll have better uh pressure and flow with his new fuel setup and then also i think this car came from florida so it was 93 octane instead of instead of 91 octane so then he basically needs to retune on 91 so it's safe to you know go into boost or he has to lower the boost technically a little bit the way this one's done is it's returning out the center and the bottom and then it's kind of like hidden from view and then it'll go um, over to here and he'll feed this side with the the remaining pressure out of the rail regulate it and then go back home this way on the bottom and then that goes to his flex fuel sensor and the feed is a dash 10 up to the radium uh, inline filter which you saw mounted down there and then it wise shortly after that with two eights and feeds both ends of the rail so you have equal pressure kind of you know equal flow and pressure it's not 100 percent necessary but that's just like a double safety that we do and it seems to work really good and then the lines, hoses, and fittings are all custom XRP that we did. And then I just need to figure out where his relays are. Probably hidden behind here. And then we would have to wire in. So the fuel level, temp, and ground is all going to be inside of this loom here. So I can put ring terminals on there for that one. But then for pump one and pump two, I'm going to need to figure out if he has his relays down in here with the, the triggers or if it's like up the batteries behind like on the little shelves he had up there oh, I can't get this out until I take this off we'll get to that later when I have multiple hands and then we'll show you the final parts to this setup I'm going to take apart the Supra because I need to get behind the dash there's no way in there can I just start taking stuff out? Probably taking the windshield out too, because I need to be able to get way in there to wire some stuff and plumb some stuff, because we're gonna run a nitrous line down from the bottle, and then kind of right along this area here where these hoses are, and then past the driver there, or if we went on the other side and up over the trans tunnel, because we're gonna go through the firewall with a bulkhead, the fittings that we need for this stuff should arrive tomorrow but somewhere around there come through and go to where the solenoids will be i was going to try and put the solenoids here but we need to be as close as possible to where the spray nozzle will be for the jet and that'll be somewhere in there and then we also got a weld on bung that we need to grind some of that powder coat off weld on where it's going to go in there and then put this guy back in so maybe i'll just set this aside we'll do some time lapsing or fast forwarding and i'll start taking stuff apart Dash is out. We got all our wires exposed. I have to pin, I believe I'm gonna have to pin like two wires in, T2 wires in, one input, so I can do a 2000 plus PSI sensor for the nitrous setup. And I'm gonna do that down through the bulkhead on the firewall. We'll show you guys when we get there. It's too, you're not gonna be able to show you later. That's after we plumb it. 
All right, so we're working on installing the nitrous outlet uh, system right now. I just made this little bracket that goes uh, right behind the intercooler right here. And what we're gonna do is, on the very bottom of the big solenoid is where the nitrous comes out of. And actually that line will go straight into the intercooler. And then the line on the right next to the smaller solenoid That'll be the purge valve, and the line on the left is the feed. So right now we're just mocking things up. We're going to get new fittings and everything, and, and probably get the bracket powder coated. But um, those two lines will come up and follow the frame rail all the way back, and it'll punch through the firewall, and we'll use like a, uh, a bulkhead fitting, and that fitting will come through the firewall over here somewhere and make its way around all the way back to the bottle. More to come. If we could give it a full day's work, we would finish it, but we're just chipping away at it for two hours each night. Probably got two, three more days of it. Oh, I think I know what I was gonna say. So I run the Pro EFI 112 ECU. Same one for many years, I really like that ECU. We have one wire coming out of that into our PDM that is for the trigger but then we need the the like for triggering the solenoid but we need one more wire I think I had forgotten this coming out of there into PDM for arming it so I think I gotta do some rating guys but I think that's what I need because we have bottle warmer arming this nitro system and then triggering it might be the same thing and purge is another button but purge probably can just be on the keypad arming it. I think it's still on the keypad, but it needs to communicate with the Pro EFI. And I got some rating to do. I'll find out tomorrow and then we'll let you know. All right, that's it for now. See you later. Hey guys, just had a blue blow pop, so don't mind the lips if they're a little blue. Anyways, we got our parts in from XRP. So I'm gonna try and figure out where we can do the bulkhead fitting that goes through the firewall for the nitrous feed line to the solenoid. I'm gonna go from the bottle to the firewall right now and then I gotta drill a hole. I'm gonna use this T fitting right here. Hold on. That's the T bulkhead fitting. So long because it's the bulkhead um, where it can go through the firewall. The reason it's a T, you're wondering. Because then you can put a sensor on one end of it, end of it. like let's say this end takes a sensor for the pressure sensor, the other end is the feed, and this one goes through the firewall, and we'll go out to the other side. I'm trying to see where I can fit it without it interfering with the pedals, and I still have space for sensor. It looks like this general area. Cause then I can, we still have all this room behind here. Pedals don't move too much that way. Uh, let's find out right behind that. It's probably not the right spot. And it's probably right where the crank breather's at now or it's in the wheel well still. So ideally it would go through, that's too close to the engine. What if it came through like over here? in between like that area wouldn't be too ugly there so those two bolts we saw on the other side were those um of course the pedal stop is kind of right where we okay i gotta think about this i'll do it and then i'll show you guys after i do it we'll be back been plumbing back there knocked a hole through the firewall come on lighting yeah, right here. I'm gonna plumb that in a second. And then me and Joe were talking right now about placement for this to go for the jet. And we're thinking, like right here. So if he puts it there, it's obviously you drill it, weld it in there, but it's sunk in there. It'll give us room to be able to get that fitting off. And that's fed from underneath here. So it's gonna be like a short run of like nine inches or something. Of I think we might have to put it more up here just because of how far this is gonna stick out. Like, well, we might break something if we, yeah. Well, this is where the fitting would end up being and then it would be like a, a really harsh, weird 90 into there if we put it 
up here if you, get if you go straight, straight down, down and, and then like yeah. yeah exactly that would work right. it's just gonna like we just have to now remember this when we're taking the car apart be like get that jet out of there <laughs> Cause like we'll bump it and like smack that off or dent it yeah, and then I sure. can't get it in and out again. Well, I'll, I'll put it right oh, here. Oh, you don't have to. Okay. Just the middle, so we'll take it out. All right, we're gonna get back to work and then we'll show you in a little bit when we have more progress. Hey guys, figured I'd steal the camera from Dan for a little bit. So uh, a couple of you have asked for me to share a little bit more about what I do here at Rad. I'm helping full time with the business from day to day and then um, of course I get to be pretty involved with keeping the race program going each year and making sure we're evolving and bringing it all together really so of course Dan's a key part to that but I spend a lot of time planning and of course there's the logistics behind every team that someone ends up taking care of you know it takes a lot of people for formula drift teams to show up at each race and there's a lot that goes into it I'm sure you guys can imagine but in addition to all of that something that I don't necessarily highlight as much as I think I could is my design background I went to school for studio art and kind of found my way once I got my first job at a print shop and um, as soon as I saw like that you can cut vinyl based on like anything that you design on your computer screen I was blown away by that and really infatuated by the materials and all of that so um, one thing kind of led to another where I got into full-on design and branding with Rad Industries and it's just become a passion of mine and really fulfilled like kind of my appetite for what I want to do um, for work so that plays like a big part in probably my commitment here at Rad I just love being able to interpret what my personal experience is, I guess you could say, within Formula Drift and um, the shop. Like, I feel directly inspired by, by Dan, of course, by our customers, by the car builds, by the culture behind drifting, and um, yeah, this is kind of my way that I feel like I get to be a part of that. Um, and it's just evolved over the years. I guess I never really quite give you guys insight to the designs that I come up with and that it's for you guys. So I thought I would take some time here at the shop. We got back from Texas a few weeks ago. Everything was stored out there um, as well as like when we're on the East Coast. So I've been wanting to kind of set up our little storefront here for a while. Um, we got some super footwear. I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. And we have you know, all our apparel there, and of course, like, stickers and some fun stuff. We have always, like, had open doors for people to come by and purchase merch. I don't know that we've really told you guys that, you know, it's a storefront and you can come in and do that um, anytime. I don't know if I'm going to have designated hours yet or not. Um, we do often have people come from all over the world, different countries, different states that make it a point to stop by Rad and pick up some merch and it's awesome because I know that like at the Formula Drift Rounds you guys will be able to stop by the pit and kind of get to meet us and um, check out what we have for sale there but I don't always have everything with me when we're on the road. Um, of course you can always go on our website radindustries.com and find stuff there but um, yeah, just wanted to kind of highlight that if you guys are local to us or if you're visiting in the area, come in, stop by, get some merch. I'll say like we usually are pretty busy um, between like just the business and stuff. Like Dan's not always able to meet with people, so I can't guarantee that. Sometimes we can pull him away for a minute or two and he can stop in and at least say hi to you guys. But um, yeah, just wanted to share that. So I can show you a little about... You guys have probably heard some of it, but some of the designs we have or that I've put together. Um, this is probably one of the most simplest, and I honestly think it's my favorite, um, just personally. This has all the internals of Dan's race motor, and I just love like doing things that you guys can maybe wear on a daily basis, um, not just necessarily only at the track or representing a team. I know that a lot of you guys are just, you know, you're interested in what Dan's been doing and you obviously love cars. Uh, let's see, this one, gotta have blue. The dude loves blue and he wants it the brightest as possible. So <laughs> this is a cool one that pops. Um, we got some more blue here. This is uh, kind of a different version of Party in the Back. I know you guys know this one. That's our retro tee. Um, that one we'll probably keep around for a while. I know you guys really like that one. We have our team hoodie here. These I'm running low on, so grab them while you can. It's the right time of year right now where it's cooling down a little bit. 
Um, this one's really cool. It's probably the first white t-shirt that I've done. I call it the chrome tee because hello. Ugh, I love that. And it kind of makes you look twice to figure out what's actually going on there. This is the cargo tee. Another nice basic for every day. You guys are real fans of this black and white Supra photo. Um, that's at Jersey. So we've done a couple runs of this, party in the back there. And let's see, we just have some fun things on display here that you guys can check out for fun. Stickers, of course. If you swing by, you can kind of take a look at these pictures of Dan Supra coming together for the first time. That was like, that was right before Pro 2. That was the very beginning build of his Supra here at the shop. Um, Super Street covered that. Our good friend Bob was here often for beginning works of that so that's something that I think we'll keep in here for a while same with like this photo we have up on the wall that was first year in Pro 2 so 2015 it all blends now um, yeah and then we also have our recent sunglasses of course I think that for the end of the year we'll have to update you guys on this but for the end of the year I think I can do a discount where I bundle our team sunglasses and um, be able to give you a discount on super footwear so these, we bought this shelf like a while ago. We found it um, from a local shop that was closing down. We got them a couple years ago with intention to actually sell super footwear for you guys. Let's see, these are Dan's favorites, the breaker style. It's kind of that more old school, like high top. This is the blue colorway. We also have it in black and white. There's a lot of other styles, the Vader's and an olive color, Vader's and black and white and red. We got some nice clean ones down here. So quite the variety. We got eight different styles for you guys. And I have carry most of them in size seven through 13 if we haven't sold out of them yet. Um, I will try to have these at Irwindale for those of you that are local and able to make it to that round. But um, if you really have your heart set on any of them, just try to buy them online or come in and snag them while you can before we sell out. And Hey, look at that. I don't know how those marks got there. <laughs> um, yeah, so just wanted to kind of give you guys like a walk around of something that might be a little um, different scene from what you see Dan and Joe working on out in the shop area. So thanks for, I guess, listening in on this and let me know if you guys have any questions, if you want to see more or different things that um, you're wondering about, I'd be happy to share with you. All right, till next time. This is exciting, guys. I haven't stopped in a while. I was having too much fun. But nitrous solenoid and purge solenoid down there mounted. We even already plumbed. So Joe popped this out, welded onto it. We had to mess up our powder coat. We'll take it back out and we're gonna paint this area. I'm not powder coating this inner cooler again because I've already bent some fins and whatnot. I'm not gonna. Still works fine, but it's like into the season. So this will work until we build a new one for next season, but um, we'll make it exactly like this. But check this out, super nice. I'm gonna, nothing's super tight right now. It's just kind of in here. I'll show you how it's routed, but this is coming from the bottle. It feeds in here and then it comes out of there into the intercooler pipe and it'll probably be tuned in with the amount of TPS and or boost or both. So um, this other line coming out here will be the purge for when I need to like hit it real quick just to clear the system. And this I'm making with a PTFE black covered brake line type of braided line. Um, and I'm gonna run it along where the feed line runs. So let me show you where the feed line goes. It goes along the frame rail and I've used P-clamps in two spots to hold it down. This is a P-clamp because it's shaped like a P if you look at the profile of it, if you're holding it up, and it holds it down. So then the feed line goes through the firewall like I was talking about. I had drilled the hole already, plumbed it completely, but I did that without you guys, so I'm gonna show you in a second here. Uh, it's a Dash 4 PTFE line, and then we have a sensor on the other side on a T, like I had mentioned, and it's gonna be tight in here, but let's see if I can show you guys. Okay, um, this is not the sensor we'll use, this one's for mock-up, but that sensor goes on one side of the T. Yeah, like I said, sorry. So there's the T. See how the line is heading away? So here's the line, and it's P-clamped, so it stays out of the way of the throttle cable or pedal. 
and then it goes near the wiring, goes along the firewall behind the ECU right there, and then it runs along all the wiring. So it's right here, and then it heads up to the bottle, and it goes in the back of the bottle right here. So there we have it. That is the setup. I have some wiring to do tomorrow, and then I'm going to finish. Oh, I didn't explain one thing. I'm going to finish this purge line and it'll it'll kind of just ride along with the feed line until it gets here. Feed line goes through the firewall. Purge is going to come up here and I'm going to put another bulkhead that goes through here. The cowl usually covers this up right here. But the bulkhead will go in through here. So it'll be like a 90 fitting and then on the other side of the bulkhead is this hard line that they supply from Nitrous Express. We'll have that go in there and then we'll have the purge kind of stick out over there through the, well, this is real bendable, really easy to bend uh, aluminum hard line. So we'll get it set up just at the right angle. At the very end, it'll go through the cowl. Just kind of, here's the cowl. I'm gonna ideally poke it through like one of these holes here. Same angle as the windshield and it'll and spray out near the windshield on the driver's side of the car. So it's not in my way. You're only gonna hit that if, you know, before a run or whatever to clear the system, make sure it's all good to go and there's no bubbles, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's fun setting this up. That was a lot of talking. I'm gonna get back to finishing this hose. Probably talk to you guys tomorrow.